welcome today. Thank you very much for coming here today. And I also would like to thank for this opportunity for the um, secretary member of the EMBOM. I'm Takeya Makita, uh, working at JAMSTEC, which is Deep Sea and Oceanography Research Institute in Japanese government. Uh, because we JAMSTEC have a center about uh, managing Japanese node of Orbis, as a part of its activities, we are also acting as a secretary of the Asia Pacific version of the Asia Pacific Regional Group of the EMBON. So I think Masa will explain uh, AP EMBON later, but AP EMBON is a regional part of the EMBON and it is also acting as a marine group of the AP EMBON, which is not only marine, marine one, but also uh, considering both terrestrial and marine and shorter one. So we are uh, recently informed that uh, we have a new session about the uh, AP EMBON uh, in satellite activities of Ocean Decade Laboratories. And uh, our activities also endorsed in the uh, Marine Life 2030 as a part of the EMBON. So we would like to uh, contribute more about the uh, decade of ocean and marine life 2030. So uh, today we uh, let me share the screen again. Uh, today we invited two uh, presenter. The uh, first one, first first speaker will be the Basta Nakaoka, uh, who is the uh, um, Reader of the AP EMBON, and he will explain about the uh, about the AP EMBON. As the title will be the contribution of AP EMBON to enhance science education and outreach of the marine biodiversity studies in Asia Pacific region. And second uh, speaker will be the Arinta. Uh, she will be talk about the. Um, Marine biodiversity research at CMEX and empowering public biodiversity protection. So, if Masa is ready now, uh, I think I'd like to uh, pass the um, pass the no, microphone to the Masa, and we, you can share the screen if you are ready. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Take, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Masahiro Nakaoka. Uh, call me Masa uh, of Hokkaido University, Japan. And I'm now working as a, a chair of APM Bon and a, a one of the uh, co chairs of uh, M Bon. And uh, today I will going to talk about our activity, uh, general activity of APM Bon in uh, Asian region, especially East Asia and Southeast Asia. Okay, can I start? Yes, please. Uh, okay, uh, I hope you can see my, the screen of my presentation. Uh, so as a background, uh, I think most of you already know that uh, East Pacific to Southeast Pacific is a region where uh, uh, marine biodiversity is uh, highest in the world, especially around Coral Reef Triangle area and also uh, along the coast of uh, Japan, Taiwan, and uh, mainland China to Vietnam. It is one of the hot spots of the uh, marine biodiversity. Okay, however, we have uh, relatively few knowledge uh, for uh, the scientific knowledge of our marine biodiversity. For example, it is one of the paper uh, describing the uh, world, worldwide decline of seagrass uh, beds in the world. According to this paper, the uh, world seagrass bed in the world has been declining at a rate of 5% per year. Uh, that is very serious concern, but I guess uh, more serious concern is actually just very few reports from our region, uh, Asia, uh, even though it is a hot spot of marine biodiversity. So to uh, 
uh, to facing such kind of situation. I think we have to uh, work in a good group for uh, promoting our science of marine biodiversity in our region. Uh, to, uh, for this reason, we have uh, recently established a branch of MBOM called APM BOM. And uh, it was officially established in uh, 19, uh, 2019 uh, in a meet, meeting of AP Bon at Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And actually, there's a, more than 20 uh, scientists that attended the meeting, on site meeting in uh, Malaysia. And then uh, we decided to promote our, our activity. And I have been uh, working as a chair of this group. Okay and Take as a Secretary General. And of course, uh, as he mentioned, uh, JAMSTEC, one of the biggest institutions of marine science in Japan, uh, is also working as a node, uh, regional node of the OBIS and uh, as an uh, important activity of marine science. So uh, we have a, a office, but it is, uh, we are working voluntarily for uh, this network. Okay, uh, so uh, talk about uh, network structure. Uh, actually, we are a kind of hybrid group. Uh, so geobond uh, consists of uh, several regional bonds, uh, country bonds, and thematic bonds. And uh, we have Asia Pacific bond, mostly working for terrestrial, uh, freshwater, and marine environment. And there's a thematic bond. One of them is uh, M bond. Uh, so we are situating the mid middle of these two groups uh, as I am born. But uh, most of the, uh, the uh, participant of our group, members of our group is uh, quite variable. Some of them are more engaged in M bomb, whereas others are engaged more on AP bomb, whereas some others only uh, join APM bomb. So it is a kind of uh, interesting hybrid group. Okay, when we establish uh, the group, we uh, set our fi five missions, uh, promoting monitoring and data collection of marine biodiversity in our area, uh, and promoting, of course, research various type of research project, and, uh, and, and assisting the technology development for better biodiversity observation and capacity building. Uh, it's very important, especially to raise the next generation scientists. And finally, outreach, linking so science to society. Uh, actually, uh, most of the work on our uh, activity on uh, monitoring, uh, actually, we succeeded the legacy of uh, Nagisa, National Geography of Nearshore Area. It is one of the core program it, which was uh, one of the core program of census of marine life uh, in Asia Pacific region. Uh, it was actually uh, conducted between 2000 to 2010. Uh, and there's a, a regular census network of the research program uh, was held uh, in uh, some uh, many coast, uh, coastal area of the uh, Asia, Asian coast. And uh, actually, uh, quite a large number of data has been uh, upda uh, updated on Orbis from our region. Uh, but as you know, uh, this uh, program once ended in 2010. And we actually uh, had uh, difficulty in uh, getting uh, for the fund to uh, keep on all the activity we obtained by uh, Nagisa or other activities of census of marine life. However, some of the uh, good practice remains. One of them is it is only within Japan. Uh, the uh, Ministry of the uh, Environment, Japan, has launched a program called Monitoring Site Thousand which is actually quite ambitious program for a governmental agency to conduct. But uh, uh, we have been engaged in a nationwide program of 
uh, monitoring biodiversity and ecosystems of uh, uh, thousand important ecosystems from uh, mountain, forest, uh, and to, uh, to the ocean, uh, include, including 28 coastal sites and uh, 27 coral reef sites uh, along the coast of Japan. And we are doing a um, uh, census of marine uh, biodiversity uh, once in a year since 2008. This is an example of the uh, study, uh, census site, uh, long-term monitoring site for the seagrass bed uh, in Japan. And we have quite a large number of seagrass species along the coast of Japan. And one of the interesting achieve, uh, outcomes actually uh, we obtained, it is just by, you know, only we can do this type of uh, assessment by long-term monitoring is as some of you uh, uh, remember, we have we have we were hit by the large uh, earthquake and tsunami in 2011 uh, already 10 years ago uh, which actually destroyed the seafloor completely along the coast of uh, Sandic northeastern part of our mainland and uh, because we have been start uh, we have been monitoring the seagrass but since uh, in the same way since 2008. Uh, now it is a date up to 2018 and we are still uh, continuing it. Uh, so uh, we know the, how the tsunami affected uh, seagrass bed in two bays in uh, northeastern Japan. And uh, fortunately, this gave us an opportunity after the large disturbance, how seagrass bed recovers. And uh, we found up, uh, we need more than 10 years for the total recovery of seagrass bed uh, until, until the you know, average uh, status before the tsunami. We are, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there's a large uh, data gap in the, actually the marine biodiversity data in uh, Southeast Asia. And it is an example of uh, seagrass pet. Uh, we have our most uh, highest diversity of seagrass species in this region. And as I mentioned, there's a few report. So one of the tasks we uh, first tried as a, a group member of a seagrass scientist in APM Bond is to collect new data uh, of occurrence of each species in these regions. So by uh, uh, actually working together, I think more than uh, 15 scientists in, of seagrass uh, specialists in this region have joined. We actually uh, survey consistently, uh, not only internet data, but uh, all the old reports is stored in each location written in all uh, local languages and collected uh, more than 2,700 uh, 2, GIS data on seagrass pet distribution in Southeast Asia uh, observed since uh, 2000. And then uh, we did some uh, analysis uh, about uh, if there's a temporal data, we could uh, carry out uh, uh, trend analysis, whether it is increasing seagrass bed area is increasing and decreasing. And what we found is uh, nearly two thirds, two thirds of the seagrass pet with which has temporal data on uh, area has been still declining in uh, uh, East and Southeast Asian region. And we also can uh, specify uh, the causes of decline and also uh, protection status. And the rate of decline is actually 10% uh, uh, per year. That is still a serious situation. And, but there's a hope. There's uh, some seagrass bed uh, now increasing in uh, area. So uh, this uh, finding uh, actually uh, published last year. 
Okay, and uh, not only, uh, of course, uh, recording and uh, obtaining new data on marine biodiversity and uh, continue monitoring, we are actually helping to promote uh, various type of research in coastal ecosystems. One of the uh, most recent important subject is, uh, as most of you may uh, be involved, uh, blue carbon uh, assessment in coastal areas. And uh, in recent, uh, pro uh, there's a several uh, good uh, project or uh, uh, research uh, funding uh, available to promote such research, especially on uh, seagrass bed and the mangrove uh, to not only uh, capture the uh, marine biodiversity status, but also the uh, studying ecosystem functions like carbon stock uh, amount or ability. And there are several uh, important paper has been recently published to uh, show the status of blue carbon uh, ecosystems in our region. And uh, last month, uh, we actually uh, successfully published some of the uh, papers in a special feature of uh, blue carbon. Uh, in the journal Ecological Research. It is an uh, English journal of, uh, issued by Society of Ecological Society of Japan. And uh, for the new uh, development of new technology, uh, we are also helping to promote a uh, new method for observing marine biodiversity in uh, better uh, with uh, up-to-date uh, new uh, technology. One of the uh, things uh, is actually, it is uh, the good research by Take. Uh, actually in uh, one, I think it is the biggest uh, seagrass bed in Thailand, in Southeast, Southwest Thailand. Uh, the old picture of the seagrass bed has been available since 1973. But as you know, black and white uh, picture is sometimes very difficult to discriminate uh, seagrass bed by uh, color images. Uh, Take is very good at this uh, study to uh, classify the seagrass, past seagrass bed, changing past seagrass bed uh, using a, a new uh, discrimination classification method uh, by deep learning methodology. And now uh, we could compare the long-term change in seagrass bed uh, in Thailand uh, since 1973 to up to now. Uh, based on this technique and another important uh, novel uh, method uh, that is a species distribution model, uh, which I don't have time to uh, introduce everything now uh, this uh, session, but now we can not only uh, forecast, but also backcast the uh, past uh, status of marine biodiversity, uh, something like uh, 1970 to, uh, to 2070s uh, using the existing data of the important component. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm working for Seagrass, but we are also collaborating with uh, uh, researchers in uh, uh, especially mangrove uh, specialists to uh, uh, forecast or uh, predict estimate changes in marine biodiversity in our area. Uh, we successfully funded for five years project, uh, but unfortunately due to COVID, we couldn't uh, do the year collaboration in such field work uh, up to now. I hope we can do some uh, insight work uh, in the second half of this year. Okay, another uh, movement in uh, uh, marine bi new marine biodiversity research in our area is the uh, utilization of uh, metabar coding and eDNA techniques, especially for fish and decapods, uh, crustaceans. Now, uh, good metabar coding uh, uh, probes are available, That's something like uh, called my fish or my deca, which is actually uh, first developed by the uh, Dr. Mia in uh, Chiba Museum of Japan. And now uh, we recently run, it is really nice uh, tool to uh, 
revealed the status of biodiver marine biodiversity in our area. And we are trying to uh, actually restart a new project uh, led, led by uh, Professor Tadashi Kajita of the University of Ryukyu uh, to understand the marine biodiversity in uh, mangrove area. Because as you know, uh, visual census is very difficult for fish and other uh, associated animals in mangrove area because of the turbidity. But uh, actually, if we could uh, do the uh, filter the water, uh, scoop the water and filter it, and then using a next generation sequencer, we could estimate what type of uh, animals are living in such turbid waters. Uh, there's a one uh, on, uh, already uh, some data obtaining for the, using the um, metabolic eDNA data for fish uh, from one island in Okinawa, uh, Japan. And quite a lot of uh, species uh, actually estimated to occur, including some uh, red, uh, uh, red, spe uh, red threatened species. And Professor Kajita is quite successful in getting uh, successful funding to uh, extend our ne network, not only in Asia, but some collaborator from Africa and uh, uh, Middle and Southeast America, uh, South America, to uh, continue network pro uh, activity on eDNA uh, observation in uh, mangrove region, mangroves uh, ecosystems in tropical regions. And the uh, uh, fourth uh, submission is actually uh, nurturing next generation specialists in Asia. Uh, actually, one of the things, as I've been working as a, for the marine, uh, research, marine station uh, responsible for uh, education for uh, undergrad and uh, graduate students. And fortunately, there's a, a fund available to uh, organize uh, um, uh, international uh, marine courses. Uh, so our uh, intention and uh, one of the things we are promoting is to make the link of the uh, marine uh, courses for uh, undergrad and graduate students who are willing to be uh, joined as a uh, be the scientist in these our regions. We have a lot of good uh, young uh, students who are willing to uh, Yes, yeah, set up their career to be a, a, as a marine scientist. And we are planning to give more opportunity. Uh, one of the uh, courses we are offering is uh, called Hokkaido Summer Institute, which uh, is held every year in, uh, in the summer in our station. But we want to establish uh, this kind of activity. And finally, uh, I think the final or the most important output will be the uh, linking uh, our uh, research to the uh, actual uh, so social well-being. And one of my postdoc and uh, group is working in uh, Philippines and Indonesia, how the uh, ecosystem or marine biodiversity related to uh, human uh, living and well-being. In, uh, there's a case study in two uh, yeah. areas. Are there any, any gaps that you see in, in skills and expertise that we need to address? Um, okay. To there's a noise, or shall we? I'm extending the time. Okay. Uh, based on the social uh, survey, a uh, questionnaire survey of the local communities uh, doing uh, local scale fisheries. Uh, we got, we actually learned a lot that uh, uh, coastal, uh, natural ecosystem in coastal area is very variable, not only for the uh, food and the income, but something like social relationship, memories, beauties, skill and pride. So you can't pay for the happiness uh, we feel together, uh, that it is a world crowd, uh, you know. There's a lot of uh, important, uh, you know, ecosystems, uh, cultural ecosystem services we obtain from the uh, healthy coastal ecosystems, which we need to uh, conserve 
and actually consider together with local citizens. As you know, in Asia, uh, nearly 60% of the population is uh, relying on coastal ecosystems and uh, status is now not in a good condition. We have to consider uh, much more with the uh, local stakeholders in our region. So we are uh, some of uh, working together with social scientists and uh, scientists on uh, policy uh, research, marine policy. We are discussing how we can effectively uh, establish the relationship uh, of the co-design, co-production, and co-delivery with scientists and stakeholders, and uh, promoting uh, some activities for setting up uh, citizen science for uh, long-term monitoring of coastal ecosystems. And uh, some of us are also involved in uh, promoting the local and the governmental uh, policy makers to uh, recommend some uh, uh, key uh, conservation and the restoration uh, guidance for sustainable use of marine ecosystem. It is a uh, one, uh, recently uh, published one for the case of Japan. So uh, I've been talking about our, uh, yeah, some of our various activities in our region, but of course we are hoping to link our activity to uh, other parts of the world. As you know, uh, Mbon is quite, uh, you know, uh, and intensively uh, studying uh, in the US and uh, Europe, and I want to we want to build more tight connection to achieve more uh, wide scale research to uh, promote uh, more research and the conservation of marine biodiversity in the world. That's all for my talk, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Masa, for giving your introduction of um, past and future plan of the APM one. So uh, I think we will have the time for the discussion uh, after the uh, old presentation. So if you have any question or comment, please add, add your question to the Q&A of the Zoom webinar. And if you are watching YouTube channel, you can also write the comments to the YouTube channel. But uh, although I cannot see directory uh, now, but uh, secretary office will pick pick your question. So uh, let me move to the next speaker. Next speaker will be Ari Tan, and she will uh, giving about giving the talk about uh, her her center uh, she makes, uh, which is uh, um, Center for Marine and Coastal Studies. And I think uh, she will also introduce uh, related, uh, uh, re related act her activities. So, Arin, if you already. Yeah, uh, thank you, um, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you, you Taki. Shared, uh, yeah, thank you, Taki, for the introduction. A very good uh, morning, good day, uh, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, I'm Eileen. So I will, today I would like to share a little bit on the marine biodiversity research at CMAX, uh, which is our marine center. And also the second part of my talk will be talking about empowering the public in biodiversity protection. All right. So the first one, um, the first section of my talk will be mainly focusing on the biodiversity research at UC Science Malaysia. CMAX actually stands for Center for Marine and Coastal Studies of uh, UC Science Malaysia. And this slide shows the, the focus area of, of the whole center, uh, which we focus on green mariculture, biodiversity research, coral reef and marine ecosystem, sustainability, ocean education and climate change. And we also are trying to blend the arts and the science together. But uh, for today's talk, I would, we, I would just focus on the biodiversity research and also um, a little bit on our national uh, marine reference collection. Okay, um, um, CMAX yeah, uh, is actually the oldest marine station in, in Malaysia itself. Um, therefore, um, we have done a lot of cruises, not, not cruises on oceanography, but cruises 
specifically pertaining to biodiversity. That means um, we do a lot of diving uh, during the expedition. So one of our, our biggest crews is, we call it the Roses Expedition, which is uh, the research on the sea and islands of, of Malaysia. Um, we, do, we do a cross-section along the Straits of Malacca all the way through South China Sea. And we do a lot of diving. If you look at all the islands, or all the reefs being stated, uh, those are all in the dispute area. So it covers a lot of um, um, un 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 uncharted uh, reef um, uh, that, that we have done. Yeah. So the next one, because of, of us championing the, the expedition, biodiversity expedition, sorry, um, because of us championing the biodiversity uh, um, we, uh, expedition, we managed to actually set up our reference collection. Uh, we have we are actually holding uh, hosting the largest national collection of bolas. Sorry, um, I don't know why my slide skip. Um, the largest national collection of molas, hard corals, and echinoderm, and we work very closely with the National Museum of Nature and Science Japan, and also the Nature uh, Natural History Museum from the UK from the United uh, uh, UK. Um, and then uh, what I would like you know, uh, to talk about is uh, besides um, um, to highlight, you know, um, CMAX is actually focusing on invertebrates because we feel that we have to set a niche, um, um, you know, for one, any center, uh, we cannot champion in all range of all the phylum um, um, of animal kingdom or flora kingdom. So ours for CMAX, we mainly focus on um, echinoderm. And of course, now we move also into different ecosystems, uh, mangrove ecosystem, coral reef ecosystem, seagrass ecosystem. And now we are working very closely with the state government, the, the local government to actually converting some of the seagrass grass area into marine protected area, marine sanctuary, um, uh, more situated in the northern part of uh, Malaysia itself. Most probably I'll, I'll, I can discuss more with uh, Professor Masa on how we can collaborate together on, on seagrass and mangrove uh, ecosystem up north. Yeah, uh, in terms of biodiversity, because uh, MBON, because uh, in line with um, the, the interest of the audience, we would like to focus more on biodiversity. And why is biodiversity important to us, which is a very obvious question to all of us here, because biodiversity provides to our economy, provides life ecological support, supports recreation, uh, cultural and scientific needs. Biodiversity represents a wealth of systematic ecological data that helps us to understand the nature world, the natural world and its origin. This slide, you know, just now it was actually um, uh, shared by uh, uh, Prof. Massa uh, on the marine hotspot. If you look at it, uh, it shows that the marine hotspot of the world with the highest marine biodiversity hotspot concentrated at the Western Pacific region. If you look uh, on the on the this this area, the, the area four. Yeah, Central Western Pacific, you know, it's concentrate there. And the next next slide shows, yeah, and this slide shows the global dis, uh, dis, distribution of cumulative environmental impacts uh, with highlights of high cumulative impact index. Uh, also around, you know, if you look at it, um, this area is also uh, the impacts, yeah, this disturbance distribution of environmental impacts is also focused here. What is... What is uh, no, this is indeed a worrying coincidence due to the biodiversity loss and the impact from climate change and anthropogenic factors. That means we are rich and yet we are facing huge challenges uh, from, from a lot of things, you know, human activities, climate change, and 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 um uh, anthropogenic factors. Yeah. When we talk about richness, yeah, many of us would think about dollar and cents without much focus on our vast ocean heritage and translating our, our ocean heritage to our wealth. In fact, uh, in, in the Asia-Pacific region, we are very rich you know, in terms of our heritage. To engage people in environmental issues, such as the biodiversity crisis, one has to inspire a connection with nature. That linkage should be built from a clear and compelling message about the importance of biodiversity and what we risk uh, in depleting it. Uh, for example, Sir David Attenborough, has, uh, uh, the famous uh, naturalist, has once quote, no one will protect 
what they don't care about and no one will care about what they have never experienced. Yeah? So this is um, very important. You know, uh, the next question is, what is our vision for biodiversity? We want, to broke, uh, we want the broken ecosystems to be restored, missing biodiversity to be returned. We want people to benefit from a healthy ocean. We need more people to, to, na to uh, on nature's side and more space for bio biodiversity to thrive. Yeah, so there is three main delivery uh, strategies. Yeah, which is you know very simple: do it ourselves, guide and support others, influence change, and inspire actions. These are all the things that we can do as a scientist, yeah, or as a researcher. In general, many of us knows what are the right thing to do, but commonly people want to fit in with what most people do and what should be done. We need social influencer, you know, that, that well, I, I'm, I'm trying to actually um, uh, uh, encouraging all of us to be social influencer so we can empower the public for the protection of biodiversity to create sustainable uh, behaviors. So to empower the public, we need, we need to discuss issues that are impacting our uh, the livelihood of the public. We need to empower the public to take action and to take charge. Issues that, for example, impacting their livelihood. You know, if it's things that it doesn't it doesn't concern the public, most probably they don't care. But if uh, the impact is impact impacting the livelihood, for example, fish kill uh, might be affecting the livelihood of the fish farmers. Um, uh, issues such as plastic pollution impacting the livelihood, environment, and and the organism that we care for. And issues that touches the heart of the public, such as this endangered species being caught in abundant fishing nets, you know. So these are the things that 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 actually um, um, open the eyes of the public. So to engage people in biodiversity and other environmental issues, one must provide the opportunity for enhance the understanding that empowers individual to make choices and to take action based on sound science and reliable recommendation. We must encourage behavioral change. That is also one of the mission of uh, uh, AP board uh, on, on, on making changes, you know, behavioral change for biodiversity among the public. The approaches to be taken are motivate the change, socialize the change, and ease the change. So to empower the public, we must implement the three Cs, communication, collaboration and coordination. That is why all of us gather today on, on this Friday network. You know why this Friday network is important for us to be involved and to be actively play a role so we can, we can actually enhance the communication, collaboration and coordination uh, among, uh, among all the scientists from different regions. Yeah? So empowerment through education through courses that the UST is able to, to provide, just like what's been shared by Professor Massa, you know, on their um, uh, summer courses, international summer course. Um, CIMAX itself, you know, Center for Marine and Coastal Study, we do also organize our international courses. The beauty of uh, our courses is we the center, the marine center is one besides being the oldest marine center in the nation, it's also located inside a national park. Uh, uh, Penang National Park and everything is within reach. We have the forest at the back, we have the, the, the river system uh, on the side and then we have the rocky shore in the tidal base, uh, uh, mud flats and then we have the, the ocean itself and we can actually uh, go to the, the seagrass bed within within uh, less than a, uh, half a day, you know, that means we go and collect sample and we can come back to the marine center almost immediately. You know, that's, that's the beauty because of our, our location itself, yeah. So empower, empowerment through public awareness and involvement, we should look into creating more citizen science activities with the public, such as getting school children involved in collecting reliable data for management and decision making. Citizen science, like what uh, uh, Professor Mas Masa has mentioned earlier, involve public professional partnership that allow people of all ages an opportunity to participate in real scientific research and to interact with scientists in the process. Some examples of the various international courses and capacity development uh, program that is also one of the, the uh, uh, objective of 
AP board is is um to have capacity development program. Now this this is some examples that um the the capacity development program that has been conducted at CMEX. We have engagement engagement with many countries as shown in the bottom of the slides: Thailand, UK, Canada, Japan, Australia, Hong Kong, China, India, Bangladesh, and then there's more to come. Of course, um, uh, hoping that. Um, once the, the the pandemic is over, you know, uh, things are start to open, then we can organize our international uh, workshops and capacity development program again. And also, um, our international capacity development courses will take the participants out in the field for hands-on training and many times working together with the local community. The beauty of the, the capacity development uh, organized by CMAX is we do not just, um, uh, uh, it's not just between the participants and the scientists, but we actually, in some of the program, we do insert in uh, elements of uh, working together with the community themselves uh, is a co-learning and co-designing kind of approach that we are using. And then um, the next one is we do conduct outreach program as well uh, with the local government as well as with the industry partners, uh, such as local hoteliers on the importance of the ocean as well as contributing the knowledge to the rural school children, the, uh, especially providing opportunities for the underprivileged students to be involved uh, or, or, and, and to be uh, uh, getting some hands-on on, on how to do science because we need to promote science uh, education also. We do roadshows, partnering with local government and the local think tanks of the government. Yeah. So besides uh, road shows and training courses, we are now working towards empowerment through stories. We hope to grow more science communicator among the early career ocean professionals, which is the ECOP, on, on how to actually share their knowledge to the uh, general public. In recent years, yeah, with the hectic lifestyle, people are reading less. You know, less and less people are reading, but they are more engaged with social media. The media has an important role to play to disseminate the awareness message to the public. So the public can remember better about conversation of biodiversity and other issues better through stories, cartoons or comics, and more impactful if messages were to be shared through short videos uh, such as YouTube, or, or even now the popular one is the TikTok. You know, uh, A lot of our younger generations, they are converting their, their knowledge through uh, such short videos and then to be shared with public. And, and it actually plays a good impact uh, to reach out to a, a broader audience. There are many things we can do. Not, we, we still do not know about our vast ocean. You know, there's so many things uh, um, that the, the ocean are so wide. You know, um, we, there's still a lot more uh, ocean science to be conducted. So we must provide and enhance the understanding of biodiversity uh, and its degradation in a way that empowers people to make choices and to take action based on sound science and reliable recommendations. We need to involve the, our youth, yeah, our younger generation to play a more active role in protection, protection of our marine biodiversity and our ocean, just like what being quoted by one of my students, yeah, she is uh, in the third year student, uh, her quote is, the scariest part about the ocean isn't the presence of shark anymore, it is the presence of rubbish and pollutants that harm the ocean, you know, that is something that is disturbing the younger generation now. The next quote by another student is, the environment and its wealth are just alone from our future generations to us. They owe us nothing, but we owe them a well-kept environment and a pollution-free sea. So we need to encourage more of this youth to come out and speak and, and, and be the ambassador to, to move the agenda the, the, um, uh, on, on, on creating the awareness in the general public. And, that, and, and um, uh, the journey of educating and creating awareness is a long one and filled with many challenges. It requires commitment and cooperation from all. So hopefully through uh, uh, platforms such as MBORN, uh, we can actually work together. You know, um, they need to ensure uh, 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 our ocean. We need to work together. We need to create partnership with various partners from the public, be it from the industry, our corporate partners, community partner, policy makers, 
through research programs, capacity development programs with the shared learning space and opportunities. Um, CMAX has been working closely in, in with a lot of networks. You know, um, well, we have been sitting in the in the co-leads and our uh, steering committee of Equacy, uh, Cospredi, Ocean Corps, and also we are member of uh, MBON and AP Bond. You know, so we hope that. Um, uh, through this introduction, we open up opportunities for, for more people to join because the ocean is vast and, and ocean needs a lot of transboundary partnership that we can work together because one country alone cannot, cannot make changes. You know? So it's about all about collaboration and networking. Yeah? And, and um, before I end my sharing, I wish to take this opportunity to invite all of you to join the sixth uh, World Conference on Marine Biodiversity, which will be held in Penang, Malaysia in July 2023, which is next year. Hopefully, uh, we will be able, um, um, you know, we are hoping very much, the organizer are hoping very much that we will be able to have a face-to-face -face conference. We will post up the important dates soon in our website. I do hope all of you who is present here today are able to join in person in year 2023, which is next year. So for those who wish to know more about CMAX and what we do, please visit our website and join us at our Facebook account and Instagram. So with that, uh, I thank everyone for your kind attention and I pass back to uh, Take to, uh, to chair. Thank you very much. Ari, thank you very much for your introduction about uh, your center and not only uh, your activity, research activities, but also sociological activities, education, public awareness, and citizen science. It was very impressive. Thank you very much. So now we have time for the discussion. Um, first of all, if there is any question, short question or comment, Please uh, write down to the Q and A. I think some of the question is already answered by Massa. If there, there's any additional uh, comment from Massa, could you? Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, uh, for the, uh, we have some network and some of the funding actually usually given by institution to institutional level and uh, we need to have more uh, institutional or research groups if we can uh, you know uh, afford to do the further research by obtaining uh, other funding so just contact us anytime yeah. and uh, for individual uh, inquiries about who to contact in each country for the already uh, running project uh, you can ask me later or uh, send me the message later and I can ask, uh, uh, tell you who to contact in for each individual project of APM Bomb. Thank you. Thank you, Masa. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, thank you, Emmet, for putting your comments. If there is any further comment or something like that, uh, some, something to say from Ali, is it okay? I, I would like to add on, I think, I think um, um, Mbon organizing this um, Friday networks, I think is very useful, especially um, connecting the senior scientists with the younger scientists. It is a great opportunity because um, uh, sometimes we, we do hear about common names and famous names, but, um, you know, like just like Frank Muller here, you know, uh, I've heard so much of him, but I've hardly had the opportunity to, 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 to get to know him closer but at least through this platform i'm 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 i you know i I'll, i'm able to reach out um you know uh, in terms of sharing knowledge and in terms of um if you have if there's opportunity for the younger younger scientists i think um uh, i hope the audience here would would take opportunity of this uh, network yeah thank you back to you take thank you arin so if there is any question or comment, please write it down. Uh, there's a, a question and comment from Frank in chat box. 
Ah, yes. Yes, directly to us. So Frank says, uh, I'd like to ask how we can better link across the globe, globe given time zone to build Mbon and Marine Life 2030. So Frank, do you want to say some, something by yourself? Well, hello everybody. And uh, thanks Eileen and Masa Take for, for these presentations. They were really exciting and very passionate, good messages, and good science. So I'm, I'm, as we're trying to build this global network of, of researchers and how we make the science useful to people, one of the limitations, including this meeting, has been time zones. And so I'm, we've been wondering what is the, a better solution in terms of having these meetings so we can connect people in the Asia Pacific area, but also across Africa, Europe, uh, Oceania, and the US. And, and, and so the question is do you have any suggestions on how we can do this better? Yes, uh, that is always, uh, you know, uh, one problem. The time zone is always uh, an issue, especially uh, in most of the important international meeting is usually held in midnight in uh, Japan or other East Asian, Southeast Asian countries. And uh, it, it depends on whether you are uh, uh, late, I mean, early birds or late birds. And in my case, I better have some morning session, early morning session. But uh, I think we need to endure uh, with that difference in time zone. I think one solution is alternatively held uh, meeting, international uh, web meeting in different time zones. So everybody feel it's actually fair. <laughs> That's just a, a normal answer, but uh, yes. But as I think one of the most, I think everybody shares the same feeling, but we at least need more on-site meeting. You know, <laughs> we've been suspended for meeting together for already two years. And uh, now of course everybody gets frustrated, but uh, that gives us a, a alternative method. Even without uh, seeing each other, we can collaborate by the meeting that is really yeah, a good progress in uh, technology or human human being as itself. But uh, we need to use uh, utilize these two type of different meeting for but different uh, type of purposes. And uh, I think after the COVID, we can promote both on site and uh, online meeting that will give us more opportunity to work together. Thank you. Thank you, Masa and Eileen. Yeah, uh, thank you, um, uh, Frank, for that question. I mean, uh, I always feel uh, um, somehow rather, you know, that that the minority, you know, uh, from from the Asian country, we always have to have to follow the time zone of of what been organized from the Western country. But if we can actually make some rotation, um, uh, sometimes you know uh, we can have have at night of my time and then and sometimes to be organized at your night time and then it's our morning time you know so at least then we can get different audience coming in uh, and to promote the collaboration so at least we don't feel um it's always us that have to have to stay up late you know to to, to attend any the talk you know, because I think, you know, most of us, if possible, we don't want to miss any of the, the networking talk, which is very useful to all of us. If we can actually have a rotating uh, kind of uh, uh, arrangement, then there will be there will be fantastic. Yeah. Back to you, uh, Frank or, or, or Taki. No, I think, thank you so much. And I really appreciate you being up this late for this session. I think it's very important for us to see what you're doing. And, uh, and that we have common problems after all. And so we, we need to see how we can solve them with common solutions or share the technology, share the methods, share the data. So I think it's very important to, to look at this and see how we rotate and, and shift the times of these meetings so that we can include everybody. So thank you very much. Thank you, Frank, for a good, good question and discussion.
So is there any more questions or comments? If, uh, if there is not no many questions, I would like to ask uh, maybe to Irene uh, for about the uh, situation in Malaysia, about the, how to express um, uh, citizen science and public awareness, because I, I think in many of the uh, places, uh, there, I think there is a uh, how to say geo geographical separation from city and uh, natural places. So I think uh, public awareness, like how to express a uh, symposium or showing like picture or something is possible in city area. However, for the city people, it is not easy to um, experience real nature or real uh, destroy of the nature. So. Is there any possibility or activities in your um, public career that you, you are or uh, Malaysian uh, uh, activities of the public awareness? Uh, thank you, uh, Take. Uh, I think you raised a very interesting question. Um, a lot, you know, many of us think that that is difficult to bring the city community uh, to the to the coastal area. In fact, um, um, Nowadays, the, the younger generation and parents, they are very concerned of um, the younger generation, their knowledge towards the environment. In fact, they are willing, you know, during the school holiday or during the semester break among the university students, we would always organize activities and we get good response from, from the community, from the city who wants to participate, uh, participate. One of our concerns is actually the rural community because sometimes when we offer uh, our courses, uh, if we did not get sponsorship, uh, uh, from the industrial partners or get fundings, um, the 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 community the group that always losing out is the underprivileged uh, community because they do not have the fund or to even bring themselves um, uh, the transportation costs to the marine station to learn. So that is why uh, we put more emphasis emphasis to to the 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 rural community to at least have a fair opportunity to learn because uh, like the tagline, uh, no, uh, leaving no one behind. So we would, we would like to stick on that and, and provide opportunities for all, both the, the rural and the uh, 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 city, the, the urban uh, community. Yeah, so that is our focus. Yeah. Thank you, Take. Thank you. Um, any related comments or question from Masa, uh, what about in Japan? Yeah. Uh, yes, actually, there's a quite a lot of interesting situ, uh, not interesting, but, uh, you know, some of them are very uh, concerned and some of them are maybe a bright hope, but uh, we are more and more concerned about uh, uh, engaged in a study of especially sustainable uh, community uh, yeah, in relation to SDGs and more and more people, not only uh, citizens, but some leading companies uh, looking forward to uh, study in together for conservation of marine ecosystems, especially, you know, for the uh, you know, uh, economic investment. Uh, now companies need to consider about, uh, you know, uh, carbon reduction and also uh, not only uh, what do you say, uh, CRAs, but uh, I mean, uh, social responsibilities, CSR, CSR mm -hmm. but also uh, they are considering serious, start considering seriously about uh, sustainable uh, development. So it gives us a good opportunity to work in with various type of sectors, uh, citizens and uh, uh, companies, and of course, uh, local and governmental institutions. So we want, uh, in Japan, uh, we are, little by little uh, trying to, uh, scientists are trying to uh, have a more opportunity to work with uh, non-scientists. 
And I think it is basically the same in every part of the country, but we need to exchange more information how we can uh, smoothly establish uh, uh, effective uh, method uh, to promote marine biodiversity studies with non-scientists in uh, not only in Asia but globally of course but uh, we need a lot of uh, effort and uh, collaboration with many uh, peoples but of course uh, each individual has limitations in time and uh, working hours so we need to think uh, what is the most efficient way thank you thank you well a good comment and discussion. Well, I, I think uh, in the Tokyo Bay near my city, uh, uh, many, many, there is many places of the uh, nature observatory, even close to the city area. So at, at that area, it is possible to connect the people uh, of the cities uh, to the nature. But uh, I think uh, recently, um, activities of the companies also very, very uh, uh, high, high, highly high, how to express, high demands of the uh, company CSR activities also uh, increasing. So it is, it is one of the opportunity. And uh, maybe use of the uh, cell phone app is also possible case. I think uh, someone had a question about the seagrass spotter. But uh, there is uh, automatic uh, AI recognition of the uh, species uh, app. So uh, use of the such kinds of app also will be one of the choices to get new newcomers for the for, uh, citizen science, I think. Um, OK. OK. I, I mean, Ready? Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to add on. Um, it is very important, you know, when we are doing ocean science, especially pertaining to biodiversity. Um, experiential learning is important um, because um, a lot of time, even though we, you know, that's uh, uh, diversity, sustainability is in the education system, but uh, those are all classroom exposure. So we need to push more on living laboratories, experiential learning, because uh, without actually knowing it, um, uh, you would not feel uh, of, of the importance of what is there and what is not there. Because um, um, uh, so that is, that is something, you know, uh, of course, the COVID actually put a lot of things into online kind of exchange knowledge and, and exposure. But we have to move back the science to, to getting hands-on. Uh, that's why we are uh, in USM, in Malaysia, we uh, in our UST, we are trying to push as much as uh, hands-on and, and we, we want to create what we call uh, living laboratories for, for uh, whoever students, uh, 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 interns to come and actually uh, feel and get the experience from our center. Thank you, Taki. Yes, thank you. Well, considering the geographical location of the Asia Pacific and the Indo Pacific regions, there is a lot of very peninsulas and islands. So, yeah, connection, geographical connection to the coastal area and ocean will, will be higher than other places, I think. Yes, it is very important. Thank you very much. Is there any things to discuss? I think there is some chats about the, this one is chat. Some comment about the aquarium or? What is this? Uh, there's a question. Uh, Ari already answered, but the, the, is there a public aquarium in Malaysia? Yeah. So it, it is kind of related to the education or public awareness, right? Yeah, uh, Take, I would like to uh, address the one mm -hmm. question by Monica on mm -hmm. the importance to connect ocean science with the with rural or uh, uh, areas and actors in, in terms of agriculture. I do agree um, um, mm -hmm. it's important and it's also uh, the journey, um, the approach is, is going to be difficult. But 
uh, we have tried it before. If we make the approach um, um, uh, sensitizing the 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 actors or the the the, the farmers, for example, on the impacts that will affect their livelihood, then it's easier for them to actually open up their mind to accept what the, the scientist has to relate the message to them. So if we can actually connect um, um, the impacts on their livelihood, then they are more concerned. So it's something, it's difficult, but it's something that is uh, possible that can be done. Yeah, I hope that answers uh, Monica's uh, uh, concern. Okay, thank you very much. So now it's already past one hour. So if there is no other question or uh, discussion to do, uh, I think we would like to conclude. Is that fine for Masa and Ari and other people? I, I, I wish to take this opportunity for given the opportunity mm -hmm. to share um, what we are doing and, and what we would like to, to offer. Uh, thank you very much for, for having this, having me here and also uh, for the network and having uh, the participants here to listen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Masa. Thank you, Take. Uh, yeah. Thank, you, thank you very much for, for everyone and uh, for uh, fruitful discussions, uh, including uh, all the audience. I'm very happy and uh, it seems more than 70 people were joined today's session and so I hope we can keep communication, especially uh, between Asian researchers and uh, researchers and non even including non-scientists from uh, all over the world. Uh, Eileen, have you talked uh, in more detail about the next World Conference of Marine Biodiversity? Maybe it is a time, a good time to advertise. Uh, next yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, in my last slide, I did mention, let me share again, all right? Allow me to share again. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, uh, this is the, the website, but it's not, um, the details are not fully in. So hopefully all of you can actually look, look uh, watch out for the upcoming announcement for the website. And, and this is, this is, you know, I hope, I hope that by next year, you know, things are opening up, countries are opening up and, and it will be a, a great opportunity for us to, to, to be able to meet each other and, and have our face-to-face -face networking uh, done during this session. Yeah, uh, please take a snapshot of, of this slide so you can remember and then we will announce all the important dates very soon. All right, thank you very much. So I will stop sharing again and thanks uh, Prof. Masa for reminding. Yes, okay, yes. I hope I will see everybody in person in Penang next year. Yes. Yes, I, I can promise you, uh, Penang is just a beautiful place to be in. <laughs> yeah, and best food, seafood. Yes, 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 that's right. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes, thank you very much.